to DeRocher to Frick. It's double play with DeRocher and Day. With their guest, Ford Frick, here's another chapter of double play with DeRocher and Day. Welcome to another visit with baseball's most exciting and controversial couple, Lorraine Day and Leo DeRocher, with their guest for today, Ford Frick. To start things off, Lorraine has a question from one of the fans for the commissioner, and it's loaded with dynamite. Okay, what good is the farm system? I saw all those people are writing tough questions. They put you right on the spot. They read there too. Yes, on the spot is right, Leo. But let's give the commissioner time to think that one over for a little bit while we take time out for this announcement. And now back to Double Play with Leo DeRocher and Lorraine Day. Hi there, friends. You know, today on Double Play, we have our most illustrious guest, the commissioner of all baseball. But even though he is the commissioner, he's still a fan just like you and me. And right now, I'd like you to meet him. Commissioner Ford Frick. Commissioner, I'm so glad you could drop in and see us. Thank you, Lorraine. Oh, it's I a have, lot of fun. I have so many questions here for you to answer, but you know... The other day I was talking to Congressman Seller, and the thing that amazed me was when he told me that uh, this baseball investigation came about through the request of baseball. That was quite a shock. Lorraine, your question's way to a pretty good start, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, I don't know where the congressman got that idea, but baseball did not ask for the investigation. And furthermore, there was no one in baseball who advocated or sponsored the legislation that was before Congress. Some friends of baseball, unknowing to us, did put in some bills, but we had nothing to do with them. We didn't ask for an investigation. As a matter of fact, I thought we were doing very well all the time, anyhow, without one. Well, wasn't it the reserve cause that was their chief concern? Yeah, and will be, I suppose, for the next hundred years. Why, years. sure. I mean, uh, and the, I... The funny part of it is that I don't think there's a baseball player who is opposed to the reserve clause. It's only outside. Right? I've talked to the players on the New York Giants. Uh, they certainly agree that without the reserve clause, that baseball couldn't operate, I mean, to a man on our club. Was this third major league a big um, thing in the investigation? Well, yes and no. The third major league, the talk of the third major league, has been a big thing for some years. And as a matter of fact, I am thoroughly convinced in my mind that there will be a third major league. And I think within the next few years. But... You get third major leagues by growing into it. You don't go major leagues, you grow major league. And the Pacific Coast League or any other league that wants to become major must fulfill certain requirements. They must grow up to it. Just labeling yourself major league doesn't make you Just so. Just because the city uh, feels it's big enough to, ha to handle a major league ball club, that they have the population doesn't make them a, a major league. Sure, just like in your old days of playing when you used to go up and say, I'm going to get going to hit 300, but that didn't need It never happened, no. It <laughs> never happened when I hit 300. It was a swell idea. Yeah. Oh, great. I, I had that idea in mind many a year, but I've never fulfilled it. Well, you were a sports writer, Commissioner, when Leo was playing. Uh, when he first started out with the Yankees, weren't you? I think we almost broke in together. That's Maybe right. I preceded him a year or two, but yes, I was around when he broke in. Well, now, why couldn't he hit over 220? Lorraine, the, the trouble was he swung in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> you mean his timing was bad? You know, oh, as a matter of fact, now, honestly, he wasn't a bad hitter. Pretty tough when there were some boys on bases. I've seen them get some good bases. Uh, thanks for those kind <laughs> words, Commissioner. See, that's the first time anyone on this program has said that I could even hit the ball. Well, Commissioner, before I get into these letters that uh, people have asked, I would like to ask you, now that you are Commissioner, do you find it easier than when you were President of the National League? Some way is very much easier, Lorraine. No longer am I waking to 2 o'clock in the morning by umpires complaining about something happened on the ball field. I can go to bed at night and get a night's sleep, and it's marvelous. What do you mean you can go to bed at night? Every time I pick up the paper, you're making a speech here, you're making a speech there. I was saying to Leo, I said, I'll bet you poor Mrs. Frick never sees her husband now that she's... That he's well, a as a matter of fact, the one thing about speech making, I find that I make such bad speeches. I'm only invited once, so once I get around the circuit, I'm through with all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, let's get to these, let's get to these letters. Uh, let's take... This one first, it says, Dear Lorraine, there's been a lot of controversy over whether or not the baseball leagues from top to bottom could stand a realignment. Have you any ideas on this subject? What does he mean, realignment? This is from Jack Sheffield in Detroit, Michigan. Well, I think that's the old story of, of realigning your leagues, for instance, getting Major League Baseball on the coast and possibly moving some 
Class A clubs up to be Class AA and eliminating some clubs that are doing very badly. A complete realignment of all your baseball setup. They don't see why Baltimore can't be taken out of the International League and brought into the Major League. They think that the uh, city is uh, big enough to support Major League Baseball. Well, and that's just one of the things. Well, they the think the Major League teams and put it in Baltimore, or would Baltimore no, they come think up that, with its own team? No, they think that some Major League city that is now in the Major League. That's what I that mean. That is not this support. family argument. Come on. Yes, yes. <laughs> Break right in here. I boy. mean, you have to, or you never get a word in, because neither <laughs> one of us will shut up. <laughs> well, Leo has the point, and, and the only difficulty is that to a great many people who don't know a thing about the operation of baseball, it sounds very simple to pick up a club here and put it over in some other town in Madison. Well, right. as a matter of fact, if you take Baltimore out of the International League, now you break the International League. Then the International League's got to replace Baltimore, so they go down into another double-A or a triple or a triple-A league, and they take it now. Then that league is wrecked. Then when it replaces somebody, that league is wrecked. It, it's like throwing a stone in the water with all the ripples going out. It's not so simple as it sounds. But it can be done over a period of time with yeah, proper time. planning and proper thinking. Well, is there anything about being commissioner that uh, isn't so nice that it was when you were president of the National League? Well, it's the most lonesome job in the world. Nobody comes in to see me anymore. I used to go down on the bench in Leo's clubhouse and punch the bag with him or get on the train with the players, see them here, there, elsewhere, the owners and the people in baseball. And somehow that's disappeared and I don't like it. Well, you know that's sort of like... Uh, when you, when you were appointed commissioner, the very day that uh, Mr. Frick was appointed commissioner, why, Leo and I had a dinner date with him. And we had had this dinner date with Mr. and Mrs. Frick for about three weeks. And it just happened that that morning we picked up the newspaper and it said that Mr. Frick had been appointed commissioner of baseball. And Leo said, oh, he says, call him up right away. We, we've got to cancel the dinner date. It just wouldn't, it just wouldn't seem right. It just wouldn't be right for us to go out with him because everyone will say that uh, now we're polishing the apple. So I imagine that's what happens with everyone else there. All well, friendships are off. I now hope, you're a commissioner. Oh, that's not true. Anyhow, it was a good dinner, wasn't well, it? Well, it was. We went out not only that, and I did an awful lot of talking, if I remember, at that dinner. I tried to get some of the <coughs> slight uh, stipends back that uh, uh, that uh, Mr. Frick uh, had to take from me when he was the president of the National League. But uh, I didn't seem to make any headway. Well, Leo... How's your golf game, Commissioner? Are you playing good? Better? Since I don't get that money for golf balls, I've almost given up the game. <laughs> oh, I don't oh. have you around anymore. What really happens to the fines when you uh, fine a player? They go into the league uh, treasury. Into the league treasury. And I might what say that, that I have like? quite a stipend behind my name. There is you quite a amount You have contributed a great amount. I have contributed. Well, I think that's marvelous. Worthy charity is always worthwhile. Oh, yes, he, but I've changed he, now, you know. He's, I'm, uh, he's the new director. I'm the new director. Sure. I'm not the, I've heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's a question I'd like you to answer. Would there be any advantage in having the season start at a later date? What's your opinion? When you have an eight-club league, Lorraine, if you have to play 154 ball games in order to get an even break on your schedule. Now, 154 ball games means that you must have a 24-week season. Now, if we start the season two weeks earlier, that means it will run two weeks later in the fall. That means that your World Series will not get on the way until mid-October when the weather is bad. It means you're in competition with college football, which we don't want to do with other sports. So the answer to that would be, I think you're going to have to stay with our schedule as it's set. Well, you just said if we started it two weeks early. I mean, I think you mean if we started two it two later, weeks later. Two weeks later, I mean, I'm sorry, yes. Well, how many days do they leave open for rained out games and postponed games? Well, you don't Is leave, there any special no, amount of days leave, that you leave you open? you don't leave games for rain games. You, you have travel days. There usually are, oh, well, let's see, you make four western trips. and That's right. Trip, so there probably would be eight open days on the schedule for travel. Those are the days that they fill in. Then, of course, the clubs out. themselves will make some open dates after they have their schedule by... For instance, if they want to, moving a Tuesday game up to a Sunday doubleheader or something of that sort of leaving a day open. For years, you know, our mutual friend Bill Quorum has been advocating leaving a week open at the end of the season so that in case of rain outs, so to avoid ties and avoid uh, untold things and winning pennants. But uh, that sounds well, but again, it's very difficult. Yeah, it's hard it's to do. Tight. You, you run, run in football. Run in bad weather That's right. at the end of the season. But tell me, what happens... If you cannot schedule a game in. That's just rubber the green. It's just too bad. It's just too bad, just even too if it's bad. in a close pennant race? If it's in a close pennant race, the only thing you do, for argument's sake, will say that we're playing at Boston, and they have a doubleheader scheduled with us on the last day we're there, and it rains. And they have two or three games to play with us at the Polo Grounds in New York. We transfer those games to the Polo Grounds. But, to answer your question the way you put it, that if you two clubs have run out of games, 
it's just too bad. That's the, as the commissioner said, that's the rub of the green. Of Every the year plan. I began to worry about that about the first of September the Dear God, don't let us have rain in the <laughs> last week and some team not that's in the pennant race lose a game. And so far we've been very fortunate. We'll keep our fingers crossed right. for it. Well, let's go on to this next letter. But before we go into this question, I think we should allow our sponsor a little bit of time to uh, say a few words about his product. We've been talking about baseball a long time. And now back to Double Play with Leo DeRocher and Lorraine Day. Okay, now let's go into this letter. What good is the farm system? <laughs> well, I've never <laughs> there, heard there, that anyone fact, would do away Oh, with yes, it. there are many things that could be said anti-farm system. There are many things could be said for it. I uh, personally feel that the farm system is essential. Speaking for the New York Giants, I wish we had a lot of more clubs that uh, we could get a, a more Willie Mays and uh, Lockmans and Thompsons out of for. Well, of course, a lot of people will say that because the farm system, the major leagues are able to dodge the player limit. In other words, you're entitled to 40 players, 15 That's on right. option, 25 active. Through the ownership of clubs, you control not 40 ball players, you might control 500. Well, I understand that you're against the 24-hour recall. Is that right? And why, if it is? <laughs> no, I see this or is going to start, this this is going to start from a family <laughs> argument to a Jerosha Frick argument. I didn't know she was going to ask this I question. I didn't either. I just suddenly remembered that I had read that the commissioner was against 24-hour recalls, and I just wanted to ask you. Well, I am, I am fundamentally, yes, Lorraine, for this reason. It seems to me quite unfair to the people of Minneapolis that they have a man out there who's playing for Minneapolis who's a star who possibly can win a pennant for him, and then just like that, have him taken away someplace else. That hurts Minneapolis. Now, there's the other side, of course, that you can always argue that when a player is capable of advancement, he should be advanced right now. Well, a 24-hour recall permits you to do that. But it's just another way in which you can control and manipulate players around. And to me, I don't know, it just doesn't quite make sense. However, I'm not going to fight that one very hard, <laughs> one way or the other. Well, gee, I'm, I'm sorry. I have some more questions I, I should like to ask you that have been sent in, but we've just run out of time. I'm sorry. Thank you, Commissioner Ford, for being our guest today. Ready. And we'll see you next week, same time, same station. So long. You've been listening to another chapter of Double Play with baseball's most exciting couple, Lorraine Day and Leo DeRocher. Today, Lorraine and Leo had as their guest, Ford Frick. Join us when again it's time for Double Play with Leo DeRocher and Lorraine Day plus another big-time guest star. Double Play is produced by Marty Martin, directed by Ted Nealon, and is a Martet production.